بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين نريد for translation السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Awareness is so important. Knowing your surroundings and paying attention to those around you is critical. A trend that is of great concern to all of us is the phenomenon that we call active shooter incidents. Some recent examples that we're all familiar with include the House of Worship in South Carolina. The video you are about to see was created by the NYPD to help communities, all communities, to be the eyes and the ears for the city. A recent study by the United States Secret Service and the U.S. Department of Education found that most active shooter attacks are planned and are rarely conducted on impulse alone. According to the study, over 90% demonstrated troubling behavior that caused concern to persons around them. 81% spoke to a friend, sibling, or other confidant about the idea before acting. Seven out of 10 were previously attacked by others or felt bullied or threatened. Over two thirds obtained the firearm used in the attack from their own or a relative's home. A quarter had a history of drug or alcohol abuse. 17% had been previously diagnosed with a mental illness or behavioral disorder. There is no set profile of an active shooter. The best prevention is to be actively involved. Talk to your child. Ask questions and observe their reactions. Know your child's routines, activities, and friends. Pay close attention to their communications. Take disturbing social media posts or text messages seriously. Be engaged. Don't ignore the indicators. Take action to keep your family and your community safe. I am not a hero. I love my community just as much as I love my son. Seek assistance if you need help. Teachers, guidance counselors, and clergy members can provide support and facilitate access to valuable resources. If you see something, say something. And always remember, in case of an emergency, call 911. It has been the department's custom before major uh, religious holiday events for our various religious communities in the city to come together. Police personnel, community leaders, religious leaders. We do it during the Jewish community's Passover celebration. We do it uh, uh, during some of the historical events, African History, American History Month. And for a number of years now, we have done it for those who practice uh, Islam, uh, the Muslim community. And today we had probably about six, 700 of our department personnel, community leaders, many imams at that uh, event downstairs. And I was very pleased to see that audience. On June 5th, the uh, uh, Ramadan will begin, the period of fasting and celebration of religion. And we were very pleased to be able to put this gathering together. If there are questions at all relative to the event this morning or related issues, we'd be more than happy to respond to that. That uh, we're very pleased with the very large turnout down there this morning. I think at this time, the relationship is getting much better. It was certainly strained for a period of time around concerns that the police department was spying on the Muslim community, certainly after the events of 9-11. We have recently entered into a settlement with some of the plaintiffs in the Raza Hanshu case. I think that uh, settlement was agreeable to all parties, and I think we will benefit from having that behind us with some guidance about going forward. Additionally, uh, we have a growing 
Muslim population in our department, close to a thousand uh, police officers, many hundreds of traffic agents, school safety officers, as well as in our civilian workforce, uh, many more. And we are encouraging, uh, as we are hiring, the department is growing, that uh, Muslim members of our city look to the NYPD for employment opportunities. I think also uh, it's ironic that uh, uh, in some respects that the controversies on the current presidential race, some of the comments by some of the candidates during the course of that have allowed us to uh, do what we are uh, basically expected to do, please, to protect the rights of all individuals and to push back against uh, comments or statements that uh, uh, basically are not uh, appropriate, that we feel are inappropriate, and almost attacks upon our members and upon the communities that we are charged to protect. So it has allowed us uh, in the NYPD to restate, not only to the Muslim community, but to the population in general, that we exist to protect against all, under whatever guise, whether it's a political campaign, under it's a, uh, the, the hatred that unfortunately still exists in many parts of our country, uh, that we stand here to stand with any group that finds itself under attack, maligned or inappropriately uh, uh, characterized so that uh, we will continue to stand up for the rights of all citizens, and that is the responsibility of the, uh, the New York City Police Department. Considering that uh, I think we now have a, a Muslim population, those who practice Islam, uh, of eight to 900,000, I think, is some of the most recent estimates I saw, effectively one out of every 10 New Yorkers, that uh, the number of hate crimes that are documented by the department are relatively small. Uh, and the increase we saw this past year was largely the act of one individual acting against another individual. Uh, in any event, however, we have uh, one of the country's first and largest and most effective and efficient hate crime units. And recently, we added a second Muslim officer to that unit. This Muslim officer speaks Arabic, so that will assist us in hate crime case investigations. And we are committed to that, that uh, to, no matter what the crime is, if it's based on hatred, then we will investigate it uh, as thoroughly as we can. And the good news is that uh, despite all of the attention to the issue uh, in our national political race recently, we have not seen an increase coming out of that uh, uh, discussion, out of the, some of those speeches. I, I don't envy our uh, Muslim uh, members in terms of that one month of fasting and particularly in the warmer weather that uh, the, the refraining from, from drinking and uh, as was the admonishment this morning at the event to uh, physically prepare themselves for that one month so that you go into the month uh, strong. But the department uh, attempts to be understanding of that issue, to be as accommodating as possible. Uh, as we uh, attempt to, in this extraordinarily diverse city, to understand and embrace uh, all the customs and traditions or requirements of in, uh, the case of uh, Islam, the requirements of the religion for that month. And we'll seek to work with our, our members on uh, understanding that and working with them. Ramadan, I mentioned downstairs our new Critical Response Command and our SRG. That's uh, over 1,100 officers and those numbers are going to grow. Uh, part of their responsibility during Passover for the Jewish faith, during the uh, Christmas holiday season for the Christian faith, that uh, we will seek to do several things. One, increase visibility. Uh, certainly our intelligence efforts will be watching and mindful of any threats that may be directed against any of the religious institutions, schools, facilities. Uh, we'll also be mindful of trying to work with our traffic uh, offices and our precinct offices on parking issues understanding that during the five times of prayer and other special events during Ramadan that there'll be uh, issues around many of the mosques as it relates to traffic and parking. We try to the best of our ability to be accommodating to that. Uh, good thing for the Muslim faith, a significant and growing percentage of our traffic officers are Muslim. That, uh, so they are very sensitive. There may be many of those who are praying at the mosque during those five times uh, in the course of the day.